I have a plan, sir. Really, John? A cunning and subtle one? Yes, sir. As cunning as a fox, who's just been appointed Professor of Cunning at Oxford University. Hi, welcome back to UK Tool Talk. Well, you've already seen, if you've watched the last video I've done, or one of the last few, about this Nipex tube cutter, it didn't get a very good review. So, I said I was going to try and sell it maybe on eBay, or I was pretty, pretty pissed off really with it. Anyway, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I am going to, in typical John fashion, I'm going to uh, try and adapt this to make it more like a pipe slice. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna strip the whole thing down and what I'm gonna do is see this little bit here. I'm gonna cut that there. A little bit like that on both sides and also a little bit of that off. Also, I'm gonna to attempt to put a really, really strong spring behind there. It's not very strong really, so I'm hoping to put a stronger spring there. So what I'm gonna hoping to do, once I've done these two things, like it, it's set at, um, well, set it at 15 mil on here at the moment. I'll set it on 15, hang on. It's difficult to set to exactly 15, but when that clicks in, You've got to run it round with the wheel and tighten it up. But me thinking, thinking right, if I put that down one, one ratchet to like nearly 12, you can't get that in. So with these little bits cut off here, what I was thinking, and a stronger spring, if I can set, set it so I push it into, into then it pushes the wheel back and it can't get trapped on this bit, what I think is going to happen, it'll work like a pipe slice, <laughs> kind of. And it should be able to do the same sort of thing, 15, 22 and 28. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sharpen this little arrow up a bit on both sides, or maybe on one side, and I'm going to make a special mark for 28, 22, and 15 because they won't be on the line up to let's it won't be lined up to let the 28 one if I have it working if I ever get this thing fixed um you know god loves the trier and all that it'll actually be set about 26 mil on this on the ratchet so that means it'll click in hopefully and it'll have enough strength in this spring in this spring and the blade's sharp enough to cut through 28 mil copper so this little tube cutter it will be kind of like a the first ish pipe slice that'll do 28 22 and 15. i might even make it to go down and do 10 mil as well i'm not sure so i've kind of sussed out how to take this to, apart i've got to take the wheel out there and then i've got to knock that pin out of the back and, and then all this will this bit will come out the inner bit will come out I don't need to take this off the rail at the moment. It's held on to the rail with this little little pin there. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna cut these bits off at the top and then we're gonna take this, this bit apart and see what the spring's like in the back of there. Right, we're back. I've done a little bit. As you can see, cut them off. Cut that little bit off. A little bit, little bit of tidying up to do on that area there. So that's that bit, and this bit here is the spring that goes in the back of there. If you can get it, see it, yeah, that's it. And then this bit goes in. You can see also, hang on a minute, I've also cut them to roll them over a little bit. So that goes in there, if you can get it to go. Yep. This bit goes back in there, like so. What I was thinking, instead of that tiny little spring, the plan is to get a bigger spring at the back there. Okay, this is literally hours and hours and hours later. 
So, am I getting anywhere with this attempt to improve this very complicated tube cutter? Well, you know when you start a project and you're full of enthusiasm about your thoughts and, and you kind of like um, optimism about making something better or improving something, it gets the old grey matter going, definitely. But there's this little niggle in the back of your brain going john john <laughs> this isn't going this isn't this isn't going to work this isn't going to work you know you're not that you've got a, li a few little bits of gray matter rolling around in your skull so you kind of know it's not going to work but you push on every anyway because it's about the process it's about the process for me it is anyway it's about trying to figure out problems and trying to think up solutions and it's just about kind of like just pushing through even though you know you're not going to get the result you thought you were going to get i'm not stupid i knew <laughs> in heart of hearts this wasn't going to work but i enjoyed the process yes it's been frustrating but to be honest with you if i kept if i kept in the back of this thought in the back of my mind it's not going to work if i kept that in sort of the little bit, not in the forefront, but ticking over in the back. What that meant was that I wasn't heading for a massive disappointment. Have I improved this? Have I improved this tool? A little bit. I've improved it probably by about 10%. I was hoping to get nearer 30, 40%. There was absolutely no chance of improving it that much. To try to turn this tube cutter, which uses... um this wheel here and this track here to tighten the actual blade onto the pipe as you cut it to turn it into a pipe slice which hasn't got this and it just uses um, the blade being forced against the pipe to cut the pipe it hasn't worked it hasn't worked but it worked it's worked a little bit as you can see these little bits have improved it a bit it makes it easier to get the pipe to click into the rollers and onto the wheel. So what's this strange little bit there I've got the back there? Well, that is an old plum an old plumbing fitting. That thread there is three eighths BSP. And it's an old plumbing fitting which have um, put a little bit of solder on the end of it. Not it's not perfect. And then I've kind of like titivated it a little bit. And the reason I've done that is to make it like a bit of a barrel down the back of there to make it a, a longer spring. So my theory was that if it got a longer spring, I could make this bit where the wheel goes on kind of have a lot of tension to it, a lot of tension. So when I clicked it into the rollers there, it would push against the copper pipe and be able to cut it by having a stronger spring. To be honest with you, what the crack is, I've got like a box of springs, but these aren't very good. So I haven't given up totally about this project, but this spring here that are, fit, are gonna fit inside here is not up to the job. You see, I've got another one inside it. I've tried to sort of make it this spring a little bit spring, a little bit springier by putting two springs in. So that spring here, you see that fits in the back of there like that. And then the spring sits against here, this little hollow we've made in there. So the theory goes that that pushes. That's got more tension to it. We can see how easily I press that. The spring's not good enough. But we're going to put it back together and we're going to give it a test. You see that? It's not, it's not enough tension in the spring. Anyway, we'll get it all back together and then we'll see if it's improved it. Okay, we're back together. So, the improvements I've made is putting a new spring in there and I've made this little um, adapter bit with a, so I could put a longer spring in it. And I've turned this bit round. Now then, this is the bit that releases the ratchet bit. So if I push that down, I can move that backwards and forwards. And in its... Um, factory setting it had a little it would spring back up but i could just push that up with my finger there so that locks it so you can see i've made a, a very crap attempt 
to kind of um, make the markings a bit <laughs> a bit easier there. I'm going to work on that. But this one here is 15, 22 and 28. And I'm going to have to make the, improve that. But let's set that on 15 and then I'll pull that up a bit. Actually, I could go one notch further, I think. Just like that. Okay, so other things I've done is the blade here I've sharpened. So I had this little stone sharpening bit that goes in a drill to hand. To be honest with you, I just hold, I held this with my hand and then just um, spun the actual wheel and just kind of sharpened it a little bit there. So that's a little bit sharpening. Maybe might sharpen that a little bit more. Right then, enough waffle. Let's see if I've improved that. Now remember, before I started this project, these bits are here, I had loads of more metal on, and you couldn't push it in without having retracting this quite a lot. So this is the first thing we'll try. So I've got this set just under 15 mil. Okay, you ready for this? So watch this as the wheel retracts a little bit. You see, it still kind of wants to push back to the back there, but it's already tighter. It's already tighter. It can waggle it about a bit. And then if I kind of do maybe three turns like that. And then as I turn it, it's actually the spring is helping cut into the pipe. And there we go. What did I say about um, improving this by ten percent? I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a limb here and say I've improved this by fifteen percent. If I was left it as a um, factory original, it would taken taken me twice as long to cut through this copper pipe. I mean, a lot of fiddling making sure this is right. What we'll do is we'll try it on the twenty two setting. So to move move it to the twenty two setting, we push that in, and then. We just click it there. So as you can see there, I've set it on about 21. So what that means is when I push the copper in, hopefully the 22 copper, it'll, it'll retract to that bit back there and then it'll help me do a quicker cut. But we'll try it, same again. We'll just see if it'll push in. That's hard. Oh, it's done it. So that's solid on there. Just give that a little bit of a twist. I tell you what, it's actually worked. One of my little um, sort of tinkering and um, project has actually worked. I've improved this, not 20%. We'll call it 18%, shall we? We'll call it 18% improvement on this cutter. So we're going to try 28. So we'll push it in there. And then we'll push that out a little bit. And then we'll just, see that, we'll just click that in to try and make that like 27 Okay, this is going to be a bit of a challenge for this. But anyway, we'll give it a go. So that's clicked into there. A couple of turns. There we go. You see this here? You see this here? It has a tendency to come out a little bit. Because I've messed about with this little bit here, I've got to be careful that doesn't come out. What do you reckon? What do you reckon? I was going to just um, sort of abandon this. As I've said in the previous video, I was going to just um, sell it on eBay or whatever, just chuck it in the canal. But I'm stoked. I'm stoked to have improved this. Heading towards 20%. I've made this spring better on here, and I've made it easier to get the pipe work in there. Sharpen the, the blade in so it cuts twice as good and twice as efficient 
as when this came out of the factory. Now then, what? Look at the look. Look at this. Nipex have just brought a brand new tube cutter out. Loads of tons of research and development into this. I've reviewed it, and I've taken it to bits. It taken it to bits. And, honest to God, honestly, I'm not messing with you. I've improved it by 15%. It took me a few hours. Brand new tool. This is what I'm talking about. Think outside the box. If you're, like, a, got an engineering brain, it doesn't matter how much a massive company have spent on a, developing a, a, a product. If you think you can improve it, even a little bit, just go for it. Honestly, just go for it. I've just had so much enjoyment now, just kind of like tinkering with this and improving it. Um, it's not the end of the end of the story, a product. If this is a power tool, you're going to have no warranty on it if you start messing with it. I can't, I can't send this back to Nipex and say, oh, it's not working properly. Yeah, what I'd like to do, a little bit so I'd like to do, is kind of try and make that, try and get a red match, a colour match red for that and do that little bit. They're red, and I, I'm going to try and try and find a colour match blue, and make that bit blue as well. Maybe tidy that up a little bit, and also make these easier to see. The 28, 22, and 15. So, <laughs> what do you reckon? Do you think it's pointless? Do you think it's a waste of my time? And do you think I should have just abandoned this tube cutter? I'm getting to a point now where I actually might take it to work, because it's really quite usable now. So. If I, in my toolbox, I could just have this for doing 28, 22, 15 and 10 mil pipe quite easily. It's not as good as a tube cutter. It's not as easy as a tube cutter. But with it locking on better, with it locking on better here, like that, I can sort of do it sort of without thinking. I can turn it a little bit like that. And then I don't need to re really stare at it or anything like that. I know it's locked on. And I can just turn it like that and chat to you. Chat to you and about the weather and, and one thing and another. And it's done. There we go. Okay. That's it for today. Hopefully, um, in another week's time, we're going to talk about this. <laughs> this is the much maligned 12-volt Makita multi-tool. What's it all about? Why was it a fail? Why have so many people slagged it off? I've never used one before, but we're going to take it apart. Hopefully, we're going to adapt it somehow to make it run better and give it a good test. So that's next week, but that's all we've got for this week. I hope you've enjoyed my tinkering and adaptation. I do know a little bit what I'm doing, so it's not just complete nonsense. I have improved the brand new Nipex tube cutter. Amazing. Okay, I'll see you next time on UK Tool Talk. If you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. It'll really help me out, help the channel. Okay, see you next time.